Next up, we have a very interesting session, which is would be done by Franciscus Kurani, which is who is the executive vice president, IT strategic group, Bank Central Asia, along with Jamie and Wong, regional VP at Confluent. And they together will be sharing a banking use case, which I think would be really interesting about the event streaming versus processing. So we have Damien already joining us and Francis will be joining us too. Great to Hi. have you here. Hi there, Diraj. Nice to meet yeah. you. Nice to meet you, Igor. Nice to meet you. And we can see your screen already. So you can take the stage. Awesome. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, um, quick introduction. Uh, this is Damien Wong here, Vice President for Asia Pacific and Japan at Confluent. Uh, Co-presenting with me, uh, Franz. Franz, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Francis Kaurani. I my role is Executive Vice President for Group Architecture and IT Service Quality uh, for Bank Central Asia. Awesome. So um, today we are going to have uh, a fireside chat between France and myself, uh, where we will talk a little bit about BCA's journey. Um, and uh, you know the, the theme obviously is around how we've seen the evolution from REST APIs and legacy uh, message queues to uh, you know, a more modern event-driven microservices uh, paradigm. So uh, before we start the fireside chat, I'm going to spend five minutes just setting the context uh, of what we are discussing here uh, so that the audience will have a better idea of uh, what we're talking about. Um, so first and foremost, I think we need to understand where the, the environment that we operate in is today. Uh, we see that enterprises everywhere, especially banks, because they have uh, been at the forefront of digital uh, disruption and transformation, are moving from being users of software to becoming software themselves, right? You know, many of us today uh, don't even visit bank branches or, or use physical uh, channels. Uh, instead, we use uh, our mobile devices and, and tablets and, and the likes of those. Uh, so to many of us, actually, the... This shift is leading to a few things. One, the fact that there is a need for faster application development and time to market, the need for teams to be able to build independently, uh, the cost and complexity of infrastructure needs to be considered. We also need to eliminate dependencies in terms of, of this need to uh, speed time to market and of course the ability to uh, move forward with smaller and agile teams. So I like this quote, which uh, was made by Michael Corbett, the Citibank C Citigroup CEO at uh, Mobile World Congress in 2014. He says this, in many ways, we see ourselves as a technology company with a banking license. So a, a big paradigm shift when in the past it was uh, banks with, which are using technology as an enabler to technology companies with banking licenses. So I think this really captures that shift from uh, enterprises being software users to enterprises becoming software themselves. This then leads to another trend, which is the evolution of monoliths to microservices. I think the earlier speaker had already alluded to this, and I'm not going to spend too much time to elaborate this, but I'm sure many of us would have uh, been made familiar of the attributes and characteristics of traditional applications, which are monolithic, right? They are large self-contained applications. They tend to have highly interdependent parts. Uh, when you, uh, you know, try to uh, deploy new features and develop them, they tend to be slower because of the way that they are architected. And when you deploy them, you know, if they are not uh, done well, it does impact other systems. Uh, and when you're trying to scale these applications, you need to scale up by replicating entire applications. Unlike microservices, which are multiple, smaller, single function apps, uh, which are independently deployable and upgradable. They are also built around solving business capabilities and can be built with different programming languages. And the bottom line is that they are scalable and agile, which leads to faster feature development. So the ways that microservices uh, today communicate uh, fall largely into two categories, right? These are traditional ways that uh, organizations have approached communication between microservices. The first uh, approach is using REST APIs. The benefits 
benefits of REST APIs, obviously, is that it's simple to set up and it is also efficient in terms of message delivery. The, the way that it works is also uh, fairly straightforward. It's synchronous. So a client sends a request and then waits for the response to come back. The other way that uh, microservices communication have been enabled is via messaging queues such as Rabbit and ActiveMQ. So message brokers now act as a centralized messaging service through which all of the microservices will communicate and brokers will handle the message queuing, uh, high availability, reliable communication between the services. The messages are received in a queue rather than dropped and processed later. So the challenge we have with these traditional ways of communication in, uh, in microservices is that with REST-based microservices, it's difficult to enforce standards across these services. It's also difficult to scale if the servers are not synchronous and there are obvious inter-service dependencies, right? The services are required to maintain state, which, which has its own set of complexities. And this is also um, you know, another com uh, consideration, which is that it is uh, complex to manage and, and ensure version compatibility, which slows down development and there's also a need to, uh, to enforce some form of load balancing across the microservices. The other, um, you know, the challenges with the other way of communication, which is legacy messaging queues, is that they are extremely difficult to scale. Uh, the messages also lack persistence, which, which means that if a message delivery fails, it's unavailable for replay. And we also see that through legacy messaging queues, they tend to have lower throughput and high latency and they require prior knowledge of consumers. Um, so if you look at how Confluent plays a part with, with Kafka and with um, you know, helping to address this need, if effectively what we can do is help decouple those microservices completely by enabling a Kafka uh, pipeline. Uh, it will then provide a single standard for intercommunication. Uh, it allows you to maintain version compatibility, uh, service can be developed asynchronously. Uh, state is maintained persistently on a single platform for replay, right? Uh, it tends to be distributed and highly scalable, and you can process the data in flight and in real time. And there's, uh, uh, of, of course, this uh, flexibility in deployment modes, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, or in a hybrid model. So it does make sense if you think about, you know, the traditional way that we've enabled the communications uh, in microservices to event-driven micro services where it is not central and synchronized through events it is completely decoupled where you can then fire and forget uh, you know from an end-to-end -end testing perspective the streaming platform reduces the dependencies to the external system and the execution model is reactive right which allows it to be asynchronous um, so with that we want to move on to the fireside chat with uh, with friends and maybe just to, to uh, Perhaps, Franz, if you can share a little bit about uh, BCA and, you know, maybe share a little bit with the audience about how the bank has leveraged Kafka and Confluent to address some of those challenges that you face. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Damien. So, uh, of course, with the uh, disruption from a lot of uh, other uh, fintech or financial technology companies, uh, we as a bank, uh, face uh, challenges where we need to scale and we need to be able to uh, deploy faster uh, but we still have to maintain our stability uh, availability uh, because we are a bank right where trust is uh, something mm -hmm. that is very important for our customers so with the current uh, infrastructure or architectures we, we find that if you want to scale, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's become a challenge for us. Uh, and uh, that's why we, we see uh, why we need to take this uh, level up. Yeah. So uh, currently, uh, we, BCA is the largest bank in, in market cap uh, in Southeast Asia. And mm -hmm. we have around uh, 27 million transactions per day in average. Wow. Uh, the peak, we can be... 39 million transactions per day. Uh, so 98% of our transactions already go through our digital channels. So only less than 3% is still going to conventional branches. So, and we are doing some 
uh, modernizations towards our brands is also in order to face uh, digital branch uh, to deliver more digital services to our branches. So that that is why uh, we we think that we need to to level up uh, by working together with Confluence. In this case, actually we are looking at Kafka itself, but we don't mm -hmm. see technology as technology itself. We but we we trying to find the correct partners, the the one that can uh, help us to expedite things, uh, uh, changes, transformations in in ourselves. That's why we we choose uh, Confluence as our partners. So, uh, what are the use cases that we we apply this uh, event-driven architecture? So, uh, we we are shifting from monolithic, as probably a lot of other uh, uh, legacy systems and uh, businesses. Uh, that is what we own for for fifty years back, right? And we need to. Uh, have a flexible, agile platform, but at the same time, uh, also robust in terms of uh, scaling, uh, safe to to actually do uh, a huge number of transactions without having a problem. So, we we are targeting right now. We have around uh, 17 to 18 million customer uh, that produce uh, 30 million uh, transactions per day. Right, so. We are aiming like 30 million within three years uh, customers. So that probably facing around 100 million transactions per day. Uh, so that's why we are we are uh, trying to find the right platforms. So we use what do we use this this uh, Kafka uh, uh, Confluent is for near real time customer notifications uh, for transaction, and then we also go. Uh, machine learning and uh, uh, artificial intelligence in order to get faster uh, events and, and analyze that events and response to our customers faster. So basically that's that's the, the brief uh, what is the challenges that we face and who we are and what are our plans on, on doing uh, Confluent Kafka. So uh, Damien? So I think we uh, had some connection issue with Damien. So he will be joining back, I think, uh, in a couple of minutes. OK. So, so. yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm sorry about that. Uh, there was a bit of uh, jitter in the, in the uh, network. Uh, unfortunately, that sometimes happens, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm back on. Can you see the screen again? So fantastic. I mean, um, yes. there was a group sharing friends on who BCA are. I was told by uh, your uh, your deputy uh, president director that, you know, if you had bought shares in uh, BCA in, in 2000, that uh, you would have your the value of those shares uh, 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 increased by more than 40 times uh, over this 20 year period. So it's, a, it's a definitely a very exciting bank. Uh, success story. So moving on, uh, I just want to also um, touch on this concept of uh, integration 5.0 because you have mentioned it uh, to us before, right? Uh, that BCA is embarking on integration 5.0. Maybe if you can share a little bit more about what uh, you're referring to with, with this. And just let me know when you want me to click to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so Damien, this is our internal terms. We had been uh, using different architecture for the last uh, 60 years, right? So we call uh, uh, the current architecture that we are uh, building on top of uh, Confluent Kafka platform as integration 5.0. So if you uh, would uh, slide to the next slide. So this is the FO evolutions of, of uh, different uh, integration. So we know that definitely if an applications cannot work by itself. So we have different uh, experience on different types of uh, 
uh, integration. So we have point to point. We know the pain on point to point connectivity or integrations between applications. When one application is changed, the whole applications need to uh, all the the dependent application need to be modified and no. And then the next one is uh, we go through uh, a proprietary uh, switching engines and then things move up to AI and SOA or ASB concept. And then everybody start moving towards API gateways and messaging queue. And right now we are focusing on the, the last uh, uh, review on the architecture is going through even driven using your platforms. So the next slide, we will we'll show uh, some of the the comparisons that we are experiencing. So our conventional or classic branch applications is right now still point to point. Basically, it's it's their servers emulating uh, uh, our mainframe. So if there is uh, a modifications in that particular uh, connectivity, we need to change. And then if if everybody still remembers about JCA AJB socket programming. A lot of still doing point on two point, and you know the the pain, right? And then we have switchings, which which is uh, already quite old, right? Uh, a lot of uh, our ATMs and uh, POS, I think, still around the world, still using that. Uh, is is using uh, a standard right now, uh, ISO eight five eight three, and uh, the connectivity is need to follow that particular standard, right? And then things move uh, towards EAI. Uh, so the beauty in, in, in EAI is that uh, compared to the switching, it's becoming more open platforms. It's not specific hardware. Uh, you can have uh, a common or commercial hardware. And then, uh, but there are still monolithic applications. Uh, we still a lot of using uh, web services and it, it can, uh, connect quite well with the front end applications, but with the legacy applications or uh, conventional applications, it's become a challenge. So, but that is the function of EAI, try to interpret different protocol and different uh, standards, right? And then things shifting to APIs, everything adopting uh, API as a standard. And, and probably if you would, uh, everybody want to know, our mainframe right now is also speaking natively uh, API right now. So our mainframe can connect and uh, communicate by uh, com directional towards an API gateways. But all these are synchronous, right? And we know that there are long running tasks or, or processes that might uh, uh, risk the, the, the stability of the systems. We start shifting to message queue, right? But I think Damien also mentions about what is the benefit uh, of, of synchronous or, or uh, TCP IP, REST API, message queue, and what is different with the event driven. So that is why on the 4.0 and 5.0, uh, we are starting to shift a lot of things to microservices. Uh, we are shifting to cloud platforms, uh, to containers. So these are what we call as the journey of uh, uh, application integrations of 5.0. So the next one is, uh, 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 Damien, could, okay. So th these are the, 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 the architecture high level of what we have right now. Uh, so we have point to point, which we are migrating from classic epic, uh, branch and directly to uh, API and using uh, Kafka as the platform. And then we, we know that we have switching, we have a classic uh, switching and uh, with the modern Android POS, there's an opportunity that we can shift that also to the uh, modernization 5.0. So along with the AI itself, where everything is becoming standard, we can start using uh, 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 API gateways and Kafka as the uh, final state of our architecture uh, moving towards. Okay, that's that's probably what we can share about what is uh, what we means by integration 5.0 in BCA. 
Fantastic. So, you know, um, this is this is a great sharing and I think it's very clear why you call it integration 5.0, the evolution from uh, where you were to the future, right? You know, and, and VCA is clearly a, a leader in uh, adoption of technology uh, and uh, using technology as a way to uh, gain competitive advantage. Um, so at this point in time, if there is any a uh, question from the audience uh, we'll be happy to to take it um and um, diraj is there any question from the audience so damien first of all really in insightful session and i also enjoyed the fireside chat with franciscus and i also believe i think there is lots of uh, guidance which is available specifically for the bfsi who is all, already taking our center stage in terms of api adoption as far as the questions are concerned, uh, we do not have any questions from the audiences, but certainly would like to extend this discussion a bit further since we have a couple of minutes still left sure. as part of this session. So please feel free to uh, also expand on the shared aspects which you were sharing so that it becomes more relevant. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think I want to ask uh, Franz one uh, one additional question, right? You know, I mean, in going through this journey, uh, given your position as a technology leader, uh, Franz, with BCA, any other advice you would like to provide the audience as they start their journey towards real-time event streaming? So what we, we haven't shared there, actually, uh, there is an application integrations and there is data integration, right? So normally those approach is, is separated. Why, why we, we uh, come to uh, conclusions that uh, Kafka is becoming the right choice is that it becoming the, the merge between data integrations and application integration. So, we, we already put in place Kafka as the main uh, hub for, for connectivity application and also for data. So we can get uh, near real-time data directly or straight uh, from the source uh, itself. Uh, so everything is, is happening just right in the, the same time as the process itself. So probably that is something that we are looking uh, very uh, eagerly on, on, on mm -hmm. having uh, near real-time data integrated as the application is also integrated fantastic well that's that's very good uh, illustration for people who might not be as uh involved right you know the fact that we are seeing the the uh, convergence between these two uh, different uh, areas and definitely data architectures are leading towards real-time and uh, also event streaming as opposed to the traditional batch mindset so Wonderful. Thank you, friends, for joining me today for this session. We're also proud to see the amazing innovation that BCA is delivering with the use of Kafka and Confluent, and also for the partnership that uh, you've uh, shown. So that really brings us to the end of uh, our session. Uh, if you found the session interesting and you'd like to find out a bit more about Kafka and Confluent, we invite you to join us uh, next week at uh, Kafka Summit. Uh, this is the global Kafka Summit. Uh, August 24th to 25th. Details may be found on this slide. Um, and I'm also told by Joe Belfort, who's uh, on my marketing team, that the slides for today's session will be made available to uh, those who have participated uh, in this session. So thank you so much, everyone, for your attention. Thank you, Park France, for a really awesome sharing and uh, inspiring sharing. And I just want to wish everyone a wonderful day ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Damien. Thank you so right. much, Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Damien.